This After Effects tutorial is sponsored by iSkySoft. Filmora Video Editor is easy to use video editing software with all kind of special effects suitable for beginners. For more information check out the link in the description below. Hey guys what's up I am Nikhil from dopemotions.com and welcome to this brand new After Effects tutorial. In today's video, I'm going to show you guys a really interesting trick of creating some amazing looking title design in After Effects. So it's going to be really interesting and fun. So without any further ado, let's get straight into it and get started. Alright, so here we are in After Effects. Let's start by creating a new composition 1920 by 1080. Let's make this 25 FPS. 10 seconds should be good. And let's rename this to final as this is going to be our final comp. Hit OK. And then I'm going to type in my text that I want to use. You can also use a logo if you want to. So I'm going to type in something like, let's say cinematic. There we go. Let's align this in the center just like that. And I'm using the Astro font. I'll provide the link down in the description box below. So you can download the exact font if you want to. And then I'm going to go into layer layer style and add a gradient overlay just to make our text look more interesting. So let's go into the blend or the gradient overlay and edit gradient. And then what I can, I'm, I can do is I can create one more point right over here and make it a bit darker just like that. And this one, I'm going to make it really nice and white. So we have this really nice gradient as you can see right over here. So that's that. Let's go and add a blending mode or layer style of bevel and emboss just to give this really nice highlight. So let's go into the bevel and emboss and bring down the size to around two. And now it is looking much better. So that's our text that we will be using. Let's select the text and hit control shift and C to pre-compose it. Let's call this text and hit OK. And now we can right off the bat start creating our card wipe. So let's select the text and add CC card wipe to this. Oh, I think it's just card wipe. It's not CC. Just card wipe. Oh yeah, there we go. And let's set the transition completion to around 50%. And for the transition width, I'm going to go with something like maybe 20. Let's increase the rows to 60. And for the columns, let's go with maybe, let's try 40. You can always play around with the settings to, you know, create a different look. And for the back layer, I'm going to set this to none. Also for the gradient layer, I'm going to set this to none. And this is going to be from right to left. So at the 50, at 50% 50 at the very beginning, I'm going to create a keyframe. Go to around maybe, let's say two seconds and set this to zero. So now we should have something like this. Okay, then let's change the axis to random and the flip direction to random as well. So now it's looking much better as you can see kind of a transformer text look. Then I'm going to select the layer and add a linear wipe to this. And let's set this to 50% and the direction I'm going to keep it at 90. So now we just have the right side of our text and I'm going to do the same thing on the right side because I want the text to start animating from the center and you know eventually fade out at the right and the left side. So hit control D to duplicate it and just change the width the wipe angle of the linear wipe to maybe minus 90 should work. Let's see. And also we need to change the flip order from left to right. So now we have something like this, which looks pretty cool and interesting in itself. Now let's go and create a mat for that glowing text that comes from behind. So to do that, I'm going to create a new composition. Let's call this maybe wave and hit OK. And select the ellipse tool don't need any stroke we just need the fill actually or uh, maybe what I can do is let's create a new solid so hit control Y to create a new solid let's call this let's call this wave 
and also make it white. Hit OK. And from the center, holding Control and Shift at the same time, I'm going to create a circle just like that. Now we have the mask one. So I'm going to duplicate this mask. So let's maybe make it a red color and hit Control D to duplicate it. So we have masks two and I'm going to set it to a different color, maybe something like a blue or something like that. And now we have the mask two. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the mask two and hit Control T. Hit Control and Shift at the same time and just make it a bit smaller than Mask 1. So we have something like that. Select the, both the mask and hit F to bring up the feather properties. And I'm going to set the red one's feather to around 50. And for this one, I'm going to set this to around 160. And also change the mask mode to subtract. So now we have this kind of a look like a circle. So let's go and animate the mask. So at the very beginning, I'm going to select both the mask. Actually, let's go to maybe five seconds. All right, select, make some room right over here. First of all, select both the mask and hit control T and just animate them out of the frame. Just like so create a keyframe on the mask path. Oh, not on the mask feather on the mask path. So let's actually create a keyframe on the mask path. Go back in time. Make sure though both the masks are selected. Hit Control T, and then I'm just gonna animate them in just like so. There we go. So now we have something like a wave. Now to make it look more interesting, I'm gonna add a turbulence displace on this, and let's set the amount around 60 and bring down the size to maybe let's go with 20 and for the complexity i'm gonna go with 10. so now we have this really interesting look as you can see really cool shock wave kind of a thing maybe i'm gonna hit m to bring up the mask and hit f to the bring up the feather properties and you can play around with the feather of the red one so i'm gonna keep it somewhere around let's go with 20 or something like that because i want it to be a bit more sharper than the you know you know, the inner um, feather. Okay, looking pretty good. Let's go back into the final composition and let's drag and drop it the wave comp onto the text. Also, I'm going to change the text layer color to red so we can, you know, see, identify that it's a different text and hit control D to duplicate it. Bring this below. Let's make them yellow. And for the wave, I'm going to keep it maybe. Let's go with the white. All right. Let's bring it on the top of the text that we just created. Let's hide the main text for now. And this one as well. And let's change the track mat to alpha mat. So now we have something like this, as you can see, really cool. I'm going to do the same thing with the second text as well. So hit control D, bring this below and change the track mat to alpha mat. Oh, turn this on. So now we have something like this then what i can do is make sure to select the text layer or maybe the wave layer i think and add a fill oh on the wave layer obviously so let's select the text layer and add a fill to this let's change the fill to a really nice maybe orangish color something like so let's copy the fill hit Control c and paste it on the second text as well Control v to paste it up and also I'm going to add a glow to this. So let's select the text and add a glow. There we go. Maybe increase the threshold a bit and play around with the radius, depending on what kind of look you want to go for. So I think this is looking pretty good. Hit control C and paste it on the second text control V. So now we have something like that. Now it's a not, it's not, it's not that intense. So what I can do is select all the layers, all the four layers, hit control D to duplicate it and bring this below. So they're a bit more intense. Then let's turn on the main text and there we have this really interesting look. So now I can display this a bit just like that. So we have this really cool look, but I think I'm going to display this even more. And for the wave, I'm going to select the wave. 
let's pull this behind a bit let's see or maybe a forward a bit Yep, this is actually looking very, very cool. Now let's select these four layers and hit Control D again to create a duplicate. Bring this on the top of the text layer. And this is going to help us to create an overlay on the top as well. And let's change the blending mode to add. And there we go, looking pretty cool. So I'm going to displace this a bit. So as you can see, we get this really interesting animation. All right, so let's select all the layers and hit Control Shift C to pre-compose it. Let's call this title and the score 01. Hit OK. So there we have our really nice looking title animation. So I'm going to use a shock wave from Motion Pulse from motion pulse yeah motion pulse from video copilot it has some really amazing looking shock waves and i think this shock wave fits the animation perfectly this is the sh shock wave number five so i'm just gonna displace this a bit make sure it starts with the animation and there we go we don't even need to tweak it it's it just you know fits the complete animation just like so very very nice i'm gonna go to three seconds Hit T to bring down the opacity, create a keyframe, go to right over here, maybe somewhere around there and let's set this to zero. Select the key, select the keyframes and hit F9 to easy ease those keyframes. There we have it looking pretty cool. Now let's go ahead and add a tint on this. So I'm just going to add a tint just so you know, color this up and I'm going to give it a really nice orangish color something like so and also add a glow to this pretty cool maybe I'll bring down the threshold and increase the radius a bit okay so this is looking very very nice I think pretty nice yep Let's go ahead and add a background. I'm using this rock grunge texture. You can, of course, use any texture that you want to use. Also, for the shockwave, I'm going to set the blending mode to add. Let's select the rock grunge and add a curve to this and make it really dark. Just like so. I want it very minimal, just like that. And also, I'm going to create a vignette pretty quick. So let's hit Control Y to create a new solid. Make this black. Let's call this V for vignette. Hit OK. Select the ellipse tool, double click on it, invert it, and feather this up really high, just like so. And there we have our vignette. Then let's create a new solid again. Hit Ctrl Y on the keyboard and call this optical flares. I'm going to call this OF for optical flares. Set the blending mode to screen and add optical flares to this. So go to options, clear all, and we just need the glow. So I'm going to hit OK. And there we have it. I'm going to place it somewhere around there and also change the color to a really nice blue color, maybe. Something like so. We bring down the scale a bit. Very minimal, just like that. Hit Ctrl D to duplicate it. And let's place this optical flare right over here. And for the color, I'm going to go with kind of a purplish color. Create one more, hit Ctrl D, and I'm gonna place this right over here on the top and make this a really nice orange color. Something like that. Maybe play around with the scale a bit, just like so. So now our animation is started to look a bit more interesting, as you can see. Now, to add more, you know, interesting look, I can create a new adjustment layer and call this. CC for color correction and add a curves to this. And I punch up the contrast a bit just like so. And there we go, looking pretty cool. As you can see, very, very interesting. Also, let's select the optical flares again. Hit Control D to duplicate it. 
and bring the optical flares right over here in the center and maybe somewhere around here i think okay i'm going to increase the scale really high something like that and create a keyframe on the scale go back maybe one frame or two frames right over here set this to zero let's go a few frames forward and let's set this to zero hit u so we can see the keyframes i want that when the anima animation blasts up so i want the you know optical flares to be very intense and then settle down slowly so you can see very very cool yep i think it's looking very interesting maybe a bit more a bit more yep this is looking much better also you can see we get this weird color bendings so to fix this you can switch to 16 bits per channel so hold so hold alt and click on this icon so you'll get a you know much nicer glows as you can see looking very very cool and then i'm gonna duplicate the optical flares again hit ctrl d let's select this and bring this right oh. hit ctrl d select this and bring this right over here go into options and we don't need this we need the strike the streak streak and hit ok there we go maybe bring down the scale a bit just like so and place it in the position that we want so i'm going to keep this one somewhere around there and let's make this really nice uh, maybe a lighter orange kind of thing something like that and play around with the scale depending on the look you're going for yep i think it's looking pretty good something like that and hit ctrl d and let's place this one right over here just like so so we have this really nice look for our text and let's do some camera animation oh we need to animate this optical flares as well which i forgot so i'm going to set this to two seconds select this and create a keyframe actually oh i think i forgot which optical flares are this actually so i'll select this oh this is not the one i want so i'm going to delete this oh this is the main blasting optical flares i think yep so let's just give it a different color it's a good example how you can mess up when you have number of same layers you know and these two are different ones so i'm going to just color this up to green and i'm going to animate this one so let's go to two seconds create a keyframe on the scale of both the layers go back in time and set this to zero so now we have something like this pretty interesting and our animation is gonna be i think five seconds long yep so all in all it is looking very good let's give it a little bit of camera animation as well so what i can do is create a new null object and parent all the layers if you don't have the parent option you can go into columns parent and parent them to the null let's hit r to bring down the rotation properties go to two seconds create a keyframe on rotation hit s to bring down the scale properties create a keyframe on scale as well hit u so we can see all the keyframes go back in time let's bring up the scale to maybe 150 and for the rotation i'm going to go with maybe minus 12. so now we have something like this really cool let's select all the keyframes hit f9 to ease ease those keyframes go into the graph editor and if your graph editor doesn't look like this make sure to right click and make sure you're working in the edit speed graph so let's select the point and drag the handles to the left holding shift just like so and this one's as well a bit so now we have an interesting impact for our animation
pretty cool. I think it's looking much better than the example that I created. So there we have it looking very, very nice. And as you saw, it is really simple and easy to create. Now you can also add some particles if you want to add some particles as well. Let's set the blending mode to add and let's add a tint on this. And for the color, we can go with an orange color, just like so, and also add a glow. Bring this down a bit and increase the radius. Just a touch. There we go. So we have some really nice particles as well. Now also we need to parent the particles to the null object pretty quick so that it animates with the null. So here we go. We have some nice particles. And one more thing that I could do is select the particle layer, hit Ctrl D to duplicate it and bring this right over here. Hit S to scale this down to around 50. Let's place it somewhere on, on the text. Maybe a bit more to, I guess, 40%. And I'm going to place it onto the text. Also displace this a bit more in time, maybe at two seconds. So I'll just keep it somewhere around there and let's see. And let's see what we have. Yep, we have this really nice small particles going up from the text. So hit Control D again and maybe I'll place one copy right over here just like so. And let's see our complete animation. Yep, I think it's looking pretty nice. And maybe what I can do is select the particles and bring down the opacity a bit. Just a touch, maybe, or maybe instead of opacity, I can increase the radius. Then hit Control D to duplicate it. Hit S, unlink this, and let's set this to oh, Control D to duplicate it. Hit S, unlink this, and set this just like so. So now we have particles coming up from both the side as you can see pretty nice and there you go there we have a really interesting cinematic style of text and title animation that you can use for your short films maybe your promos your movies and whatnot so yep that is all for today guys so that is a wrap for today guys i hope this tutorial was helpful and if it was make sure to subscribe comment and like and I will see you in the next video. Till then, take care. Thank you so much for watching guys. And don't forget to stay raw, stay creative.